Hello there, welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. This is a BTEC applied science and it's unit one chemistry and we're going to look at understanding the periodic table. This falls under learning aim A2. If you haven't seen all the previous videos that cover the entire learning aim A1, I suggest you go and watch those first. And periodic table is the very beginning bit here. We're going to cover these first four points in this video. First up, if you don't subscribe to my channel, please do. Your support is very much appreciated. And please take advantage of the likes and comments features. Let me know what we think. You do require some prior knowledge before watching this video. So I suggest you do learning AMA1 first and you must be aware of some shells, subshells and orbitals and also the electron configuration videos. So by the end of this video, you're going to be able to identify elements as either S, P or D block elements. You'll be able to identify the group and the period number for any element. You'll also be able to link the electron configuration to the position in the periodic table. Let's look at the periodic table. Elements are arranged in order of their increasing atomic number from hydrogen at one, helium across to two, lithium 3, beryllium 4 and so on. They go in order of atomic number, not mass number. The first two groups on the left here, that's called the S block. This block in the middle here is the D block. And this block over on the right is known as the P block. So let's look at why that is then. So if we were to look at fluorine as an example, the electron configuration for fluorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Fluorine is classed as a p block element because its outermost electrons are in the p subshell. So it's classed as a p block element. If we look at magnesium, electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Magnesium is an s block element because its outermost electron is in the S subshell. It's an S block element. Let's have a look at vanadium. Vanadium is an example of a D block element, electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d3. It's a D block element because its outermost electron is in a D subshell. So that's how we're going to classify elements as S block, P block or D block, it all depends on where its outermost electron is found. So now it's your turn. What you're going to do is you're going to pause the video and you're going to identify these five elements as S, P or D block using your periodic table. When you're ready to hear the answer, unpause the video. Lithium is an S block. Carbon is a P block. Manganese is D block. Aluminium is P block and tungsten is D block. And that's all because of where you will find their outer electrons. What type of subshell are its outer electrons in? So hopefully you can already now identify elements as S, P or D block. We're now going to move on to looking at groups and period numbers for any element and linking the electron configuration to the position in the periodic table. Back to the periodic table then. Let's look at fluorine as an example here. Now, in terms of group, the group numbers are across the top. We can see them here. One, two, then you miss a few for that D block, and then it picks up again in group three over at the P block. We can see that fluorine is very clearly in group seven. Periods aren't numbered on the periodic table. You need to be able to do that. You can see I've numbered them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 down the left hand side. Be very careful that the first period, number 1, has hydrogen and helium in it. Too many times I'll see students start number 1 next to lithium. That's wrong. So fluorine here is group 7, period 2. Next example, let's look at magnesium. Very clearly, it's in group two. That's up at the top there, look. 
periods aren't quite as obvious. Magnesium is period three. So magnesium is in group two, period three. Last example, vanadium. Now vanadium doesn't have a group number because it's in the D block. D block elements aren't assigned to any specific group. So we call it a D block. We can identify its period though. Vanadium is in period four. So vanadium is a D block period four element. Let's take this a step further. And we're now gonna use electron configuration to talk about the position on the periodic table. Let's go back to fluorine. Fluorine has the electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. It's classified as a period two element because it has two electron shells. You can see here by, I've highlighted the red two, the highest number in its electron configuration, the highest number shell is two. So it's period two. It's classed as group seven because in the second shell, which is the second, the 2s and the 2p, there are seven electrons. Five plus two is seven. So it's in group seven, period two. Next up, magnesium. Electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. It's an S block element because the outermost electrons are in an S subshell. Period three, because it's got three shells, the outer shell is the third shell. And it's in group two because the third shell has two electrons in it. Both of these electrons are in the S subshell. And back to vanadium. Vanadium, remember, didn't have a group number. We classified it as D block because the outermost electrons are in a D subshell. And it's in period four because the highest occupied electron shell or energy shell is the fourth shell. You can see the 4S, a little bit awkward this one. So it has four shells, but the outermost electrons are classed as that D subshell. So period four D block element. So it's your turn now. You're gonna pause the video and for the first three questions, you're going to identify the group and period just from the symbol. So you're going to have to use the periodic table. For questions four, five and six, you are not going to use a periodic table. You are just going to look at these electron configurations and identify the period and group. When you're ready to hear the answers, unpause the video. Carbon is in group four, period two. Aluminium is in group three, period three. Tin is in group four, period five. Slightly trickier for question four. It's in group eight because it's got eight electrons in the outer shell, the outer shell being the second shell. It's got two in the S and six in the P. Two plus six is eight, group eight. It's in period two because it has two shells, the one and the two. So it's got two shells, period two. Question five, group one, one outer electron, period four, because it has four shells. Question six, this is classed as a D block element, and it's in period four, because it's got four shells. Be careful there, it's not period three, because it does have the four S subshell there. So it does have a total of four shells, but the outer electrons are classed as in the D subshell. So it's a D block element. So not only can you identify elements as S, P or D block, you're now in a position where you can identify the group and the period number for any element given a periodic table. And if you are given the electron configuration, you can use that to identify the position in the periodic table in terms of group and period number. That's the end of this video. Thanks very much for watching and look out for the next one on ionization energy.